Welcome, Mr. Murphy. Please make yourself comfortable. Do you know where you are? Somewhere between a rock and a hard spot? That's correct. Do you know who I work for? Well, I'm not sure. But it's probably an acronym. <laughs> guy's a real joker, isn't he? <laughs> Mr. Murphy, did you ever hear of the uh, Graham Act? That's a, an executive order that was enacted about 40 years ago, when the United States was having trouble with terrorist groups, it gives our agency carte blanche when dealing with uh, internal security matters. So don't dick with me, Murphy. I'll pull out my gun and blow your face off. Well then, I guess you work for the NSA. Bravo! Give the man a big cigar. Now to the next question. Do you know why you're here? Might have something to do with the guy who fell off the roof. Your actions contributed to the death of an NSA agent not to mention the small matter of interfering with an NSA investigation. Now you've got one minute to tell me all you know, or you'll find yourself the latest victim of the Graham Act. A girl hired me to find out who was stalking her. I kept an eye on her place. I saw your guy in her apartment. I chased him to the roof. He pulled out a gun. He tried to shoot me. We struggled and he fell. We've known for some time that high-level drug deals were going on at the Fuchsia Flamingo. That night, a shipment of Euphoria was to be delivered. We had our agent at the girl's apartment to make the bust. Her life was never in any danger. You screwed up. I know that you're still holding something back. What is it? <sighs> Jeez, I've told you everything I know and then some. So that's it. There's nothing more you want to tell me about. Oh, well, there is one more thing. Your agent found a small metal box at the Flamingo. So you do have it. You should have said so in the first place. Now, do you want to tell us where it is? I've got it right here. Take it. So you bid us to the box. You impress me, Murphy. I'm going to do you the favor of a lifetime. I'm going to let you walk. But if I catch you meddling in NSA affairs one more time, I'm going to put a bullet right in your eyeball. Is that clear? Get this puke head out of my office. I'll be watching you, Murphy. Yeah, this is good. You can drop me anywhere along here. We will. Whoa! The NSA thugs are courteous enough to drop me off back at the Ritz. When I get to my apartment, I notice the door is slightly ajar. The government boys probably spent some time in my office looking for the box.
Hello. I hope you don't mind. The door was open. Well, I hope I didn't keep you waiting too long. Mm -mm. Nice place you got here. Decorate it yourself? No. My housekeeper just started on Prozac. <laughs> Have a seat. Well, thank you. So, aren't you gonna thank me? You pulled my chestnuts out of the fire the other night, didn't you? I didn't get a chance to thank you because you left so quickly. I want to know why you did it. Oh, I'm sure you have women doing all kinds of crazy things just to get your attention. You don't know me very well, do you? When a woman pays attention to me, generally I'm so stunned, I don't do anything about it. I doubt that very much. So you drink bourbon, huh? Yeah, I can afford it. Yamas. Yamas. Sounds Greek to me. That's Greek to everybody. Well, I knew that. Mm hmm So, Ms. Madsen. Regan Madsen. But I'd prefer you call me Regan. Okay, Regan. You can call me Tex. That's not your real name. What is it? You wouldn't believe me if I told you. Try me. Sorry. I gotta know somebody pretty thoroughly before I come clean on that one. Well then, um, maybe you should get to know me pretty thoroughly. So where's the box? Box? Yeah, I got lots of boxes. What size do you need? You know what I'm talking about. I do not. You like to play games, Tex. So do I. What's your angle? I don't have an angle, Miss Madsen. My business is my own. I don't have a partner, and I don't like small talk. You're a very beautiful woman, extremely beautiful woman. But that doesn't make any difference as far as I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. Tough, too. I have a proposition for you. First of all, you should know, I didn't just stumble into this part of town by accident. I've been looking for somebody. And who might that be? Thomas Malloy. God, I gotta find out about this guy. He knows all the beautiful women in town. He's my father. Oh. I heard you were asking around about him, and I thought I'd see what you found out. You said something about boxes. Still playing the game? My father sent out several boxes lately. The NSA was closing in on him, and he started to panic. I'm not exactly sure what was in the boxes or however many he sent out, but Whoever finds all those boxes is going to come into an ungodly amount of money. So what's your proposition? I've already got one of the boxes. You give me the one you have, and I'll cut you in on the deal. Help me locate the others, and we'll have more money than you ever imagined. That's my proposition, plain and simple. You'll probably want some time to think this over. Why don't you call me at this number when you're ready to talk? Don't lose that number, Tex. I think we'd make a perfect fit. Well, Regan Madsen sure knows how to make a first impression. The question is, is she on the level? There's no way to know if she's really Malloy's daughter or if she knows any more about the boxes than I do. I wonder if Fitzpatrick has any knowledge of the boxes, or Regan for that matter. There's a lot more involved here than just tracking down an old friend. And I'm right in the middle of it. <laughs> 